。某种程度上，电影是公共的，但同时电影又是非常私人的。那个镜头本身它，它它带有一种记忆。The sixth generation filmmakers refer to the Chinese directors who studied to make their film after 1990s. Wang Xiaoshai, who is the director of Eleven Flowers and Beijing Bicycle, is considered as a leading figure of the sixth generation. Like many directors who were born during the Cultural Revolution, he had a turbulent childhood. He and his family moved from Shanghai to Guiyang in response to Mao's policy, and then again moved to Wuhan, and finally Beijing, where he received his higher education. The unusual experience in his early life shaped his personality and also his film style. Like many other sixth-generation directors, he tends to adapt a real story in his film to rethink and criticize the Chinese society. As a result, his films usually have strong documentary style and aim to expose the dark side of the society, rather than just being an entertainment tool as mainstream dramas. For this reason, his career is much harder than others in China, especially in terms of funding. In China, there's no、uh, film funding. Uh, before uh, the film did belongs to the、uh, national and country, so uh, uh, there's no private、uh, financiers. There's all belongs to the country. So if you want to make a film, you only make film by financiers by the country. After the reform uh, from the you know, late of 1990s, so there's a lots of private money come to the film circles, and they changed. Times have changed, but the fact that the sixth generation is pretty much still underground has not been changed yet. Nowadays, they could raise a lot of money to shoot a low-budget film, but it is still uncertain if their films can be released in China. Jia Zhangke, who is the director of Xiao Wu and Platform, suffered a lot from the censorship policy and was banned by the government until 2003. It is obvious that their films are considered as sensitive issue, or even dangerous works by the government. With the pressure and hardship from censorship system, they were not quite famous people in China, but this also gave them opportunity to show their films in Western market and receive positive feedbacks. By contrast. The Chinese film market is absolutely dominated by the commercial dramas made by the fifth generation directors. The Chinese fifth generation directors have a very influential influence in the world. New workers, actually, we are all graduate students. We have also taught some young people. But now, due to the industrial revolution, the Chinese film market is more and more 所以现在中国电影市场呢，虽然不断的在人数增多，但是主要是商业娱乐片。现在为主要被赚钱赚走的那些片子，全是港台导演和甚至演员们主演的片子。所以这确实对大陆的年轻导演也造成一定的困难。嗯、呃，我个人觉得，未来中国电影市场还可以。呃，但是现在底下最大一个问题是，在商业为主的情况下，能不能允许支持保护一些以文化、艺术或者个人表达呃为主的电影呢？给他一个留有一定的空间。In the next twenty years, there will be significant changes in Chinese film market. For example. The retirement of the fifth generation is likely to happen, and there will be another generation, or a group of filmmakers, who replace their role as mainstream filmmakers in China. Will the sixth generation have a chance to become the mainstream in China? In other words, will they transfer their critical and realistic style to a friendly and acceptable one for the majority of Chinese audience? Or 
Will the taste of audience in China change as well? It is so hard to predict, since the industry is becoming more and more diverse due to the globalization. There are plenty of successful commercial dramas in China recently, and some of them already show that a commercial film also can be critical and reflective on society to some extent. As the country is experiencing massive reforms, the film industry and censorship system also seems to be more and more open nowadays. Could this mean there will be a chance for the sixth generation to take the lead? However, it is really necessary for them to become mainstream filmmakers. Or they once asked. Is a space to live in this heavily commercialized market and industry. Just like Jia Zhangke said about themselves, 